Hello, 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 everyone. Thank you for tuning in. I am Jay Lee. This is Jay Lee's Corner. This is my quick review for The Real Housewives of Atlanta Season 14, Episode Part 2 of The Reunion. I was bored, okay, so much so that I was like, this don't deserve a live, okay, not at the all. So y'all are getting this uh, Monday evening, probably around 7 p.m. Now, I might be live at 9 p.m., so make sure to come back around here and see if we're going to be discussing, you know what I'm saying, Bishop Robbery and them or whatever's going on in the gossip sphere and whatnot. Okay, but y'all know first things first. If you have not done so already, please take a moment to subscribe to my channel to become a whole jaybird jaybird dot 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 and dot okay do not forget to follow me on social media at jaylee's corner on ig and also on twitter okay do not forget to like this video okay like the video comment in the comment section also hit the share button share me with those who you like or love or who you don't like i don't know who follow y'all but share me with whoever that's following you okay and y'all know if you want to know when i'm live you really you should hit that notification bell okay now sometimes it works sometimes it does not okay but if you following me on ig you will always know when content is a coming okay let's move on to the show so the reunion starts off with marlo still up and trying to give us a sob story a sympathy uh tapestry uh quilt of the b of the s i don't trust marlo okay her still wanting sympathy because of her past I ain't falling for it. And again, like I said last time, it does not mean what she went through is not sad. It does not mean the folks who want to give her sympathy should not. I just refuse to give someone sympathy who never wants to be open and honest about what they've been through until they had a full season of foolishness, okay? that they were read every which way about and now they want to give a sob story for attention not on my watch even her said that she wants the woman to embrace her how you know sonya has called her and checked on her and blah 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 sandy richards ross needs you because she ain't got nobody else besides sheree and we know sheree ain't nobody either okay not nobody like it. i'm just saying on the show okay my point is uh sonya needs you y'all both need each other to possibly be on next season so you cannot be asking people to feel for you and come and embrace you and get to know you when you right here tossing insults left and right behind people's backs okay no one want to be your friend marlo until you are friend to them first to prove your actions are not just a uh, fake reactions to want some sympathy okay and I, I was happy that Kenya brought up how Marlo will say things but have different actions, okay? She'll say, I want to be your friend, Kenya. Kenya, nobody like you. It's like, right, you want to be Kenya's friend, but then we're tossing her face at every little chance. Things about Mark, about her baby, about her mama, and all those things. Marlo, you're a friend to no one, okay? Girl, bye, okay? And also... When she's like, you know, in hard times, you know what I'm saying? I just, girl, bye. Kenya brought up the greatest explanation. Marla would be the first one up to say, I had a hard time with men my whole life. But said that Candy was out here a hoe, okay, and could keep no man because she had no good cooch. And Candy was out here dating below her tax bracket. Oh, really? So, again, you want sympathy for what you went through with men, but you try to toss Candy up under the uh, uh, bad cooch bus, okay, when you want to dog out Candy. Again, her actions don't matter her words okay not at the marlo full of shit okay full of poop full of poop around here okay and if a sanya to say you know marlo has been a great friend to me because you've known her for six months that is still her representative you ain't seen the real marlo if you watch the seasons over the years you would know the real marlo you have not seen the real marlo and she needs you okay she just has not had her you are too low on a totem pole for her to care about going after you you don't even matter you don't even go here sanya Anyway, they then get on Marlo kicking the boys out. Now, you know, I, it was fun being an auntie. It was fun dropping in, dropping off a little gift here and there. Live my life, live my fun, free, uh, philandering life, whatever. That was fun. But then having them with me for a time, you know what I'm saying? I didn't know how to do that. 
And no one is saying that taking in two teenage or two boys or whatever is easy. No one thinks it's easy. We all know raising kids are hard, no matter if you birthed them or not. Kids is a pain in the ass. It just is, okay? So no one feel like she's wrong for feeling overwhelmed. The issue is you round here making it seem like you had, uh, uh, no one should, should question you why you put them boys out for a whole month, okay? I needed a reset, you know what I'm saying? It was harder than I thought. Uh, welcome to parenting. Welcome. Welcome. Welcome, okay? And again, I still feel like Marlo did that for a storyline. I don't think them boys got any harder, rougher, or tougher than they had been for the past couple of years. I think she fully was like, you know what? I need a storyline. Let me say the boys all of a sudden real difficult. Okay, they real difficult. I can't take it. It's so hard. It's so hard. I don't know what to do. I need to put them out with my sister for a hope. I need a reset. All adults need a reset in life. But you can't send away kids who have already been sent away many, many times. Especially when your whole, what was me? I was an orphan. I was in the foster care. They sent me away. And you did the exact same thing people did to you to them boys. Born to act like it's different. It ain't different. It, it's not at all, okay? And when they all bring up how you did the same thing to the boys, what you said other did to you, you kicked the boys out of the home that you brought them into. And you're up here crying about someone doing that to you, but want us to give you a, a pass when you did that to the boys. And my little excuse, he was saying, well, I never took foster parent classes, okay? I was never taught how to be a foster parent. You know, no one taught me how to be a parent. You know, I came from a place of figuring it out on my own, you know what I'm saying? But I had some therapy now, okay? I be asking questions. Girl, no parent really is equipped to be a fucking parent. No one. You think, no one. No, no one knows more than God. And God, the only one who did it before us, okay? So, whatever. And again, I'm not negating how it can be hard and this and that. And she went, whatever. My point is, Marla wants to be an exception to rules that she makes for other people. Okay? And I don't like it. And she gets on all my damn nerves, okay? Now, they ask her why does she feel like, by they, I mean fans, they ask her why does she feel like the foster girls that we never see her with, okay? Because, again, you were on a whole season of a show. You didn't go visit them girls. Now, when you got a whole organization for foster children, and you were a foster child yourself, and you have two foster boys in your house who are your nephews. You didn't have not one scene. If you going to see them foster girls, not one. Okay. Anyway. Uh, her and the foster girls that we never see her with. They ask her why did she feel like the foster girls we never see her with uh, deserved to be spoiled. Hence her saying how Candy should not be donating, you know, her used clothes to the foster girls, okay? But she wanted to humble her nephews to send them to live with her sister who had way less than her, okay? And Marlo said, well, I don't see the girls as much except around prime time, around Christmas time. But when I do, I feel that they also should be humble too. Well, you should have gave them candy clothes, okay? The way to humble somebody, give them some candy. Giving, them, giving the foster girls candy clothes was would be better than you sending your nephews away to live with your sister for a month because you want to do what? I, to, to do nothing. Do nothing, okay? Now, Marlo, for the most part, the whole uh, uh, reunion, was playing, you know, woe was me. Kenya was not moved, okay? Kenya was like, girl, Kenya was like looking around the whole time because Kenya refused to give Marlo any energy. She refused to give Marlo what Marlo was trying to get, which was sympathy from the girls, to be liked. And she was like, no, ma'am, not on my watch. And when uh, Kenya then said, oh, <sighs> it's called damage control. I fully agreed. And Marlo then said, it's called evil, bitch. I was like, we know you're evil, bitch, Marlo. Marlo, we know that you are evil, conniving, little something, okay? But Kenya is absolutely right. Marlo, this whole union, is doing damage control. That's it, okay? That's it, okay? And Kenya, again, all episode was not giving Marlo any 
energy she wasn't feeding into Marlo's being. Because Marlo, I think, really wanted a full-on argument moment with Kenya. And Kenya barely gave her anything, okay? Even Marlo said, you know, I'm using Kenya's products for my hair to help my edges. You know what I'm saying? It really is it, help my edges. Kenya said, yes, yeah, I, I stand by my product. It, it can help some people, but I do stand by my product. It can, it can help. It can, it can help. Again, I'm not engaging with you. You can try as you might. You can say all the things you want to say. I'm going to give you the least amount of energy possible, okay? Impossible for a playing country. I'm stop. Anyway. A uh, Kenya segment. Um, Kenya, you know, Kenya's still not divorced. Okay, her and Mark are still at a standstill in this divorce. Now she said that he, they're not even really fighting for anything. There's just no court date. Like he is just, it's just, it's just a mess. It's sitting around at a standstill for no real reason. Okay, but for her, she don't really care. I'm at a different point in my life. I'm happier. I'm in a better, a better mood all the time or whatever. I'm saying I did Dancing with the Stars, which also was amazing for me and my and my ego and my feelings okay it helped me remember my grandmama who's always around for me when i danced when i was younger okay i love you know, it was it was great she got all emotional whatever okay so again for her it's just you know she, she this season kenya was a whole different kenya even drew said you know watching her on that dancing with the stars she saw a difference in kenya it was a different kenya and that's why she's like okay we can possibly have a second chance at friendship. And they cool now. They cool, okay? Now, Kenya versus Sanya on that damn couple's trip, okay? Now, Kenya, Kenya, Kenya uh, Sanya says, I, you know, I kept saying couple's trip. I know I kept saying couple's trip, but I wasn't trying to be funny with her. I Because on, on, on Candy's trip, you know, she said she wished she knew, you know, it was, you know, a, a couple trip. Because she may have brought somebody. So I felt like, you know what I'm saying, I want to make sure she knew. Girl, you said couple trip the most to the one person who wasn't a couple. And if you want her to say, yeah, that she can bring someone, just say the trip, you can bring a person one. It's saying couples. You kept saying the word couple and say, you, she could be that dumb. I don't know. Okay. She might not know two plus two is four. But my point is, you kept saying couples trip to the one person who wasn't a couple. That was dumb. And Kenya also said, like, I didn't regret hanging up on her. It was what it was. Whatever. Okay. Now, them in Jamaica. Uh, with Sheree, 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 uh, Sheree telling, saying that she needs to, you know, you need to handle Kenya. Well, I meant because Kenya's a lot, okay, she's a lot, and you really have to get with her to, like, get her off your back. Girl, whatever, you was trying to stir the pot, okay, but you ain't know, Sanya not really that tough, okay? Now, they did discuss, you know, how Kenya felt about Ross, and Ross, uh, you know, kind of, you know, raising up and saying, you know, don't fuck with my wife. Uh, Sanya said she didn't mind it, okay? He was defending her. It was what it was. He wasn't directly, he was not directly talking to Kenya. He was not directly talking to, to, to Sheree either, so it wasn't as if he was cussing at someone. Kenya said, you know, you know, he's, that's, can I call that man Ralph? I mean, Ross. Ross is very, very, you know, quiet. He don't really talk much at all. So it was shocking to see him kind of raise up. But she did say, you know, it, it was fine or whatever, you know, and it was not no big issue. Now, where they're sitting up there, Sheree phone rings. So who is it? It's Martell. Okay. Martell then called Sheree. Now, Kenya grabbed her phone and answered it. I said, girl, Kenya, put your, look, don't answer my phone. Okay. If, if my phone rings and I don't push hello, don't you push hello. How you know I won't talk to that person? How you know? But again, they answered the phone or whatever. And, you know, so Martell technically made an appearance at the reunion. Now, we didn't see him. We did not hear him. We just saw the fact that her phone rang. They said, hey, Martell. And Andy spoke to Martell or whatever and said Martell was a, was a 10 out of 10. He may look like a 10, but he's really a 2. In person, like in life, Martell is a 2. He looks like a 10, okay? But he acts like a 2. Mm -hmm. Now, they did address Sanya, you know, saying how Kenya put out a sob story 
when being confronted about, you know, different stuff, whatever. Can you would always say, you know, oh, what was me? Mark this, Brooklyn that. And King said, I don't appreciate you taking these one-on-one -on -one moments, okay? These one-on-one -on -one conversations that you had and then flipping it to be like, it was, you know saying, a sob story. It was not. I was being honest and open about what I was going through. And I would have appreciated if you did not make that out to be something different. Okay, look, I told y'all, um, I don't trust Sandy. Don't really like her now after the season. We'll see how she do if she come back next season. But this season, it was a no. It was a no, okay? Now, on Sanya's, uh, Sanya's segment, I didn't really care. I was barely listening, okay? I did hear, hear her say that... Um, doing a show with an ensemble cast with these women, she realized this is different than when, the, when I did it with my family. Okay, because her show came out, it probably was in like 2010. It was a long time ago, it was a long time ago. But she realized, okay, that show is different than this one. Okay, I'm fully aware of that or whatever. Um, she also brings up how her and Ross are working on baby number two, even though she said, you know, she didn't want no new, no, no new baby. She did not want one, not now, not today. I want to wait. But she said that because Ross realized that maybe she don't want one and that's okay. Since he realized, okay, maybe we don't have to have one, that made her change her mind and say well, we can keep trying okay and i said i mean i i guess so now they get on drew who they asked drew during the season about it drew was also asked on watch what happens live now the way drew said it was problematic <laughs> the way she said it made it seem like women have to do what their husbands want and women have to have a baby if that's what their husband wants and when she kind of explained it on here i kind of agree with her, what she was saying she was like i just feel like you know men can't have babies only women can have babies so it is really our job to have the baby she said but i also feel like him saying men and the women should have a conversation and there comes some some kind of agreement on what they want but she said but for me and my personal beliefs i do feel like you know it's a woman's job to you know give her husband a child if that's what he wants and you know as long as it's not a medical reason why she can't do it i don't see the issue now it's our body it's our body our choice and i feel like if drew was saying it is her choice to give her husband a baby that's her choice um but i also feel like if Sanya did not want to do that then that's her choice um so she does not owe you an explanation or reason as to why she did not want to have a baby she just didn't want one but Drew has the right to want to give her husband all the babies he wants. And I'm like, girl, we're going to leave it at that, okay? Either way, go at the end of the day, it is that woman's choice to either have one or not. Um, they get into Kenya versus Marlo. <sighs> we know Marlo ain't shit. Uh, Marlo said, well, Kenya has always dismissed me, you know, when she did not need me to, like, you know, not be friends with Portia, you know what I'm saying? She only forgave me when I, you know, did not want, uh, well, she did not, she, she, no, she only forgave me when she did not want me to be friends with Portia, okay? Kenya said, that is bullshit, you know what I'm saying? You was the one who tossed Portia under the bus. I said, no, you did do that. You did. You was the one pushing for who bang Bolo, okay? Now, Drew then brings up how uh, Marlo, Marlo, you were the one who said that you had an issue with me. <clears throat> Excuse me. You were the one who said you had an issue with me because I was friends with Portia. Now, Marlo then said, no, what I said was, you know, I couldn't trust you because you were friends with everyone I was not friends with. I'm like, so who was that? This Portia in, in Kenya? Anyway, Marlo then tried to be funny. Well, you know, you know, Kenya would never forgive me, you know, but how would I live without her? You know, she's such a great friend. She does so much for me. Oh my God. Oh my God, what would I ever do without like Kenya? Okay, and I'm like, Marlo, we don't care. You're trying to be funny, but I, I really don't care about Marlo, her season and this foolishness okay now kenya was like look marlo's fake 
She's always been fake. She'll always be fake. Her real name was not even Marlo. It's Latoya Hutchinson. Now I was like, girl, is that her real name? She said, show us your birth certificate. Now production put up one. It said Marlo Hampton. It said Marlo Hampton, okay? Now, Kenya and Marlo fuss back and forth. Yell, yell, yell. Cuss, fuss, cuss, fuss. I don't know if Marlo is Marlo's real name. I don't care. Because Marlo is of somebody who I don't trust, okay? So, to me, that not being her, her, her real name don't really matter to me or whatever. Now, Kenya brought up how, look, Marlo's words don't hurt me about things she say about me. Okay, Marlo was a selfish, vapid, uh, shallow person, and nothing she says about me hurts because she, you know Marlo was nothing to me. I don't think nothing of Marlo. Okay, the hurtful things are only when Marlo brings up things about people around me. Okay, that's what be on some BS. I said, I can see that. I can understand that, okay? Now, she brought up how Marla would drag everybody. She would drag and bring up everything somebody else has done. When Marla herself has done things that she never talks about. She never talks about her own shit. But she'll be around her like, talking cash shit about everybody else, okay? How Marla was in jail, okay, for cutting some girl's face. But never said sorry for anything she's done over the years that she was arrested for, in jail for, or this hell liable for. And Marla, can, can you're a lying bitch. I'm like, is she? Because um, when Andy's okay, and, and, okay, 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 Marlo, after foster care, did you go to jail? And she said, well, yes, I did. I'm like, but you acting like Kenya was lying. Marlo admits that she did go to jail. She was in county jail for six months after a fight she had with some girl. Hence, Kenya's saying you went to jail for cutting someone's face. Why act like that wasn't true when it sounds like it is, okay? She also brought up how I was only in county for six months. And after that, I was on house arrest and this. So you did. And that's Kenya's point. You around here making it seem as if you don't do nothing. That everyone else around you has some kind of bad trade or whatever. But you the one out there on some B of the S. I was like, girl, let it know, okay? Marlo out here and we'll talk about everybody's stuff except hers. Everyone except hers, and I don't like it. I don't like it, okay? Now, lastly, Drew and Sheree. The fact that Drew and Sheree are up here fussing over Anthony, the assistant, and what he said to each of them separately, the fact that they both know that he said something but told the other one he did not say it proves he's the drama. I don't know why y'all still fussing with each other when Anthony is the issue. Now, we've heard for years that Marlo, not Marlo, that Sheree don't pay people. So I was not surprised at all that Anthony said he was her assistant and she would not pay him. Not, we seen him say that on camera. Okay, we saw that. We saw him filming with Drew as Drew's assistant, talking about Sheree, okay? Now, Drew plays audio of Anthony talking to Ralph. They were asking him about the whole, him saying Ralph was gay rumor. Now he say, I didn't say that, you know what I'm saying? She didn't like you and she said I said it, but I ain't say that and everybody be always picking up, you know, so when, when somebody don't like somebody, they always say they gay. That wasn't, so he's denying saying that Ralph was gay to Sheree. So Drew played that audio. Well, Sheree then called him on FaceTime. He answered. He then saying, well, I don't remember saying Ralph was gay. I mean, I may have said it though. I don't recall saying it, but what I do know is, when and then Sheree said, do I, were you my assistant? Do I owe you any money? He's like, no, I wasn't your assistant in my opinion. You know, to be honest, you don't owe me no money. I said not. When anyone say to be honest, it means they were lying before, okay? He then said, but what I do know is I think that Drew needed a storyline and that for it to kill this season, I do believe that. I was like, nigga, I was happy. <clears throat> I was happy that Andy, okay, all right, buy it, hung up. Because Drew and Sheree need to team up 
against Anthony because he played both. He played both of y'all and became a topic this season. And I think him saying that at the reunion was so that he can possibly get on next season with probably with Sheree. I was like, <sighs> it was a mess. Okay, that was all a part two. I'm done. Okay, do not forget to like the video, comment in the comment section, follow me on social media at Jaylee's Corner, and do not forget to subscribe to my channel. Gotta go. Peace.